Uh, well, good morning and thank you for coming along again. So just a few more updates and a bit of an indication of where things are going. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is uh, announce some... Uh, sorry, I might get rid of my very nice little tag here. Let's me into the danger zone. Um, to announce that uh, we are able to uh, give a large chunk of land in Selwyn and a large chunk of land in Waimakariri uh, that was previously zoned as white uh, the green status. And that will mean uh, that there is around about 40,000 property owners who uh, will go from being in a white zone to a uh, green zone. Uh, progressively, uh, that would mean that uh, people can uh, go forward with their repairs and their plans for rebuild. Uh, what we do caveat though is that there will be one or two um, or some isolated cases inside those areas where in the normal course of their insurance uh, interaction between uh, themselves and EQC and themselves and their private insurers, uh, there could be, uh, on an individual basis, some land damage that needs uh, uh, more treatment than you'd normally expect in the green area. But there won't be large tracts of that. For the vast majority, uh, overwhelming majority of those 40,000 property owners uh, today is uh, a, another step forward in the right direction. Uh, I also want to announce that the demolition contract has been let for the Copthorne Hotel in Durham Street. Uh, it's been let to Lee's construction after uh, consideration by the uh, demolition panel led by Warwick Isaac and uh, later in the briefing Warwick is going to give you an update on where things are at uh, on the in the demolition program. Going forward uh, Roger is going to talk about uh, the, the uh, work of uh, that Sarah are progressing on a number of um, number of fronts so I'll hand over to Roger. Thanks Minister. Um, next weekend, so the weekend of the, uh, uh, the 30th and the 31st of July, we're having a, a, um, a big expo at the Addington, at the Addington Showgrounds, going through um, with 70 different organisations, talking to people who, um, who want to know more about housing options, banking options, insurance options. So it's going to be a one-stop shop with those 70 different organisations um, talking about what they have to offer in terms of land, House and those sorts of those sorts of issues. We've restricted organisations that can give people something within a year, so we're not dealing with people who have got sort of you know land that might be developed. People know, know, know they can be developed. We've got free buses being provided, tea and coffee, scones being provided by some of the players there. But it's very much a one-stop shop, so people are looking to try and understand what their options are and go to one place, perhaps with other people in a similar situation, and get good quality information. Um, We'd hope to have some. We've got, I've got some more information just on the Port Hills. Um, we're trying to bring, we're bringing together the information from Tonkin and Taylor, and the other land assessments have been done by the other players that are out there. Should I talk about this, Minister? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's happening. That's go. Uh, that's happening um, over these next few weeks. Um, and then, so we've got these different engineers who've done the work, both the Tonkin and Taylor people and these other engineers who've been working for the City Council. We bring that together into one database so then we can make decisions on which areas become green and, and those decisions will be taking place um, through August and hopefully make some announcements by the end of August. Long term recovery strategy is being developed by Sarah as you know and um, Roger's team have been engaged in a number of uh, stakeholder meetings this week, seven in fact, with all the key people, uh, key organisations I should say throughout the city. Um, they've held eight community meetings so far. Uh, and um, there's a number of themes that are coming through from those meetings that'll, that'll be consistent with it and uh, the, the exercise will be trying to line that up with the, um, uh, the recovery strategy up with alongside the CBD plan. The recovery strategy is much broader but the CBD plan obviously has to fit into that. Yeah, I guess we've also been talking to sort of as well of these community meetings which have been you know both in Christchurch and the Selwyn area and also the Waimak area We've also met with people like the Ministry of Education, the key infrastructure people, business groups, um, people we think have got you know, the biggest stake and have got the strongest views on how we should be going forward. Um, Naitahu is obviously another group we've met with. Um, and some of the key themes that come through really about people wanting to get the community facilities open as quickly as possible. I think if people understand their roads and their, their sewerage and so on, they understand the length of time some of those are going to get fully repaired. But some of those core community facilities to make us feel good about living in Canterbury, they want those going as quickly as possible. They, there was a lot of talk about some of the red zone areas becoming green corridors, 
you know, there's a lot of that for the res residential land. Um, there's space left by demolitions at the moment. What can we do to make them sort of community facilities in the short term? And I guess it's also just a whole economic thing about what we can do to try and make sure the economy stays strong at the moment. And I think there was actually a theme that came through a lot of the meetings I was at, just sort of almost real pleasure about the resilience the Canterbury economy has shown in this latest, in this, you know, over the last sort of nine or ten months with these, you know, these extraordinary events. Be it unemployment has hardly changed, and in fact exports through the both the ports are actually probably looking at record levels. Um, but people also, you know, there's also optimism. You know, people coming along to these meetings see a real, a real, a positive future, and they see this. They, in many cases, they see as a way we're going to build a much better and stronger, a stronger Canterbury.